friends, I'm Becky of ThePinkSamurai.com and today we have a special Enamel Pins 101 video for you all about tabling at craft shows and conventions, anime conventions, comic stuff, everything. And I have a special guest! <laughs> it's Libby of Lux Cups! Hey! Yay! Um, also Turks, but don't listen to anything he says. Um, Libby tables at all everything she does so many shows <laughs> everything. You, everything everything you do it all a lot a lot <laughs> <laughs> um i used to do, i do a fair amount of craft shows but i've kind of like come down and all of the comic conventions and anime stuff i've done was like years ago mm. so i have no idea like one of my first big ones was otakon in like 2000 I don't know. It was like a long time ago. They're probably pretty similar. Yeah, you think so? But just now there's Instagram, so you put pictures up of it. That's true. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> we asked on our Instagrams uh, what questions you guys had about tabling at conventions and anything. So we are going to answer your questions today. Some of the biggest questions were how to kind of find shows in your area. Just how to even know right. what to look for. Yes. So, so <laughs> personally, I go to shows and mm -hmm. ask people that are selling at them. One, how's it going? Yeah. Like truthfully. Yeah. Like, like really. <laughs> you probably talk to them a little bit before that, though, so that they aren't <laughs> just like, like hey, hey, how's it going? How much money have you made? <laughs> um, and then asking them what other shows they do that mm -hmm. is uh, that have been you know, good for them. Good for them that they enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. And I will say, maybe you don't ask a ceramic artist <laughs> yeah. um, if you're wanting to sell pins. Mm -hmm. If you sell ceramics, then go for it. Yeah. Um, they would have a good opinion, I think, for you. But uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably stick to your genre. Yeah, that way you know, because, you know, each show is totally different. Yeah. Um, and if you ask someone that sells something similar, then they're probably going to give you a pretty good idea of what you should be looking into. Yeah, for sure. That, that's really good for like local shows and stuff. Um, what do you think about like comic conventions and anime conventions? Because I think there are some databases for that. Yeah, there are some websites that list upcoming ones mm -hmm. and then also where they are in their dates. Um, I think it's really aimed at people who want to attend them, mm. but I mean, I mean you can use it. same information yeah. um, and some of them even show like you know how big they are and how many years they've been running so that's really nice yeah yeah and those I feel like I found for anime conventions even attending they do stuff super far in advance because I always think of doing there's one called IkiCon in Austin and it's like almost a year I feel like to apply for their artist alley so <laughs> yeah well a lot of them while you're at the show they mm -hmm. will ask you if you want to sign up for next year oh my gosh so you you have to kind of keep that in mind yeah for sure um some of them some of the larger ones require you to pay for the next year at that show oh my gosh so hopefully you made a profit yeah <laughs> you want to come back because here's all my money i will see you again next year <laughs> yeah yeah um most of the time that's for like vendor booths oh gotcha um, not necessarily for artist, artist alley. alley yeah um but artist alley is a lot easier to get into as mm -hmm. far as the price point goes yeah i was gonna say what do you recommend for artist alley versus vendor because i've done both and when i did vendor at otakon um i think seven or eight years ago um i didn't have pins and i was just doing like buttons and i had prints and some extra stuff but i did feel kind of lost in the big scheme of things yeah um i don't know if now that i have more stuff and kind of more of a instagram presence maybe it would i feel like artist alley still is probably the best idea so we always do artist alley yeah unless it's full and the only way we can get into oh. that show is to pay for a vendor booth yeah which um, is usually way more yeah they're usually at least two to three times more to yeah. be a vendor um but you typically get more space mm -hmm. um, but that's really intended for people who buy things and resell them yeah like pop figures and yeah you know for sure like actual collectibles anime merchandise right yeah um 
But, you know, we've done both mm -hmm. and had great results from both. It's nice. Um, so if you can get an artist alley, then it's less up front. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't you? Yeah, try that too. Yeah, because that's intended for like handmade or independent artists. Yeah. Things, you know, what and fan art and all that good stuff. What we do. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. Like us. And I feel like attendees at comic conventions and anime conventions go to both. Like, I know I always, I look at everything. Cause yes. Tickets are expensive to get into that, and I'm going to see it all. Thank you very much. Yeah. You want to get, get your money to Right. <laughs> oh, and there's also um, Renegade for craft shows. Um, that's kind of the biggest sort of nationwide one, so I would recommend looking into that if you can. Um, it does tend to be more, like, minimal leather goods and um jewelry and stuff like that <laughs> yeah so little, and it's a little bit more expensive yeah, than generally. some of your typical craft area yeah. shows but depending on your stuff that might be nice to be different because i know i've shown and i was like the only person there that was like all pink and like cat stuff so like, hey. people were like excited to see oh yeah <laughs> something yeah. different yeah I, I mean, I like it when I run across something totally different. Right. But, you know. Yeah. They do tend to go with a more yeah. folksy kind of feel. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good descriptor. <laughs> Pull <Folksy. it. laughs> So, another question we got was about, like, registering for business licenses and st licenses and stuff. And neither one of us are lawyers. <laughs> Nope. So we cannot advise you on that. We also don't know where you live because it's different state by state. Um, but the kind of main thing to think of is you need to pay sales tax in the state in which you are showing. So if we're in Texas, if we want to go to California, we have to pay California sales tax for the stuff that we sell there. Um, so you want to get hooked up with the comptroller. That's what they do. In case you were ever wondering, what the heck is a comptroller? They want your money. <laughs> um, so I know you said you have gotten, like, at some of the bigger shows, they'll ask for your paperwork. Yeah, yeah. So if you are going to be selling at a, an event, mm -hmm. especially, especially the larger ones, if it's something at, you know, in a parking lot with, you know, <laughs> you know that you've organized yeah. with your friends and all that jazz, then yeah. they probably won't send, I call them their minions, but... Yeah. <laughs> They probably won't send someone out to go check that. Yeah. But at like huge conventions mm -hmm. where they rented out large convention centers, they'll send three or four of the people, I think that's how many it seems like it, yeah. um, to go booth to booth and actually ask for your, your paperwork. Mm -hmm. um, it's great to have it handy. I've, you know, only had it happen like three times total, mm -hmm. which isn't yeah. very many, yeah. but... <laughs> You got to have it. Otherwise, yeah. um, I think maybe you can get a fine or they might Dang. ask you to leave. I don't know. Good gracious. I've always had my paperwork, so I haven't had to deal with that. Always prepared. Ooh, this but, one. Oh, well, that's my husband. But <laughs> he, that, yeah, he's, he's real good at that. Oh. So get hooked up with your comptroller and then um, just pay the state the tax that you made. If for some awful reason you did not make any money, you don't owe them anything. So, <laughs> hooray! Which also can segue into um, kind of finding your fit because some people were asking about how to find successful shows and like what's worth your time. And like, besides asking people, obviously, um, I don't know, how do you feel about so, the trial and error bit of it all? <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of it is trial and error. No. Um, you can look and see. Like, we do a lot of Comic Cons and anime kind of stuff. Um, and that's because they have, like, lots of fun, brightly colored things. Yeah. And that's what we sell. So <laughs> it kind of makes sense, right? Yeah. Also, it's really neat because, you know, if you are socially awkward, <laughs> most of the people at those those uh conventions tend to be the exact same yeah. way <laughs> that's so true so you don't really have to worry too i mean you can worry about it all you want but <laughs> everyone there is pretty much gonna feel the exact same way yeah yeah that's awesome yeah so those are usually really great places to start because you've got people who 
have just some hand cut stickers mm -hmm. on their table up to you know people who have things you know produced and have yeah. all sorts of things. books and all kinds yeah of stuff. yeah so it's a huge array if you're going to do mm -hmm. artist alley yeah and that's usually a really great place to start because people go there wanting yeah um, that type of thing that's awesome yeah so that also kind of segues we're good at segues today it's all about segue into um like how to break the ice and talk to people because i feel like that was another question that people had and i am i wrote icebreakers and not being an awkward turtle um because that's me <laughs> i'm the awkward turtle i feel like when I'm at a show, like, I get really hyped up and I'm excited. Like, I'm normally very introverted and I just like being at home. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I feel like I have to be like, ah! And then I end up being that person that, like, talks too much or, like, not enough. Mm -hmm. And, like, I had to, I feel like I learned early on that I had to, like, have some set lines to say to break the ice. What? Like what? Okay, so any, anyone who tables next to me, and you probably heard this at Flare Fest, um, it was, hi, it's nice to see you. Feel free to dig around. I've got a lot going on. I've got pins over here. They're this much and this much. Let me know if you have any questions. <laughs> and then that usually gets, it gets a lot of stuff out of the way. I'm upfront and cheerful, but then it, it backs off pretty quickly. So people <laughs> are not like, whoa, you've got to settle down. <laughs> you know? But that's usually what I do. Yeah. I don't know. I, um, I typically... I find something about that person that walks up um, and I compliment it. Yes. But not a fake compliment. Yeah, don't just make stuff up. No, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, obviously, I mean, you're a human. You know when someone's complimenting you and it's not real. Yeah. Um, well, you're probably a human. <laughs> um, but More than likely. Yeah. But, but if you give them a compliment, then it kind of already opens up, like, the dialogue between you. Mm -hmm. um, and they either say thank you or they tell you where you got it. Mm. And if it's something you actually did like, then, hey, maybe you go buy it. Right. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, that tends to be... I Usually someone has, like, a cute panda purse. And mm. I'm like, ooh, yeah, which has really yeah. actually happened. <laughs> and I went and I looked it up on Amazon afterwards. That's awesome. Um, but, yeah, just give them a compliment. And then it kind of creates, like, a, you know, a relationship between yeah. you and this person. Mm -hmm. um, and then you, hey, pandas. Oh, look, I got pandas right here. <laughs> and right here and here. pandas. <laughs> yeah. So it, it kind of, you know. And it's not totally unnatural. It's like, would you like to buy this panda? But <laughs> I see you have a panda purse. <laughs> Yeah, that would be weird. Yeah, that's a little strange. Yeah. I like the compliment, too, though, because I feel like I do that, too, and people just, I don't know, it seems like people loosen up a little bit. Yeah. And it's not, like, a pushy, salesy thing. Right. Well, and when you walk up to someone's artwork, it's kind of awkward as a customer, too. Yeah. Because you're like, oh, what do I say? Mm -hmm. I like this, but... Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. and if they, you know, interact with you and say, oh, I really like your hair color, mm -hmm. then, oh my God, oh, thank, thank you. you. I know. Sweet. <laughs> then, then you already <laughs> feel like, you know, you're not pressured and yeah. it, it just creates a really like positive environment. For sure. I feel like whenever I go to stuff, like, especially like small press expo stuff where it's all basically an artist alley thing. And if I walk by someone and I see them just sitting there. Also, random tip, stand up. I always stand up. I never sit at shows unless it's like super slow and I'm really tired or like pregnant. I get tired, um, I'm not pregnant. But <laughs> <laughs> I like having my booth up a little bit higher, not just like standard table. If you can, I lift it up a little bit so it's a little bit more eye level for people. You don't have to bend over as much. Exactly, it's not like, what are you looking at? And I always stand up because if someone's sitting down and like feeling awkward, like then I'll get that awkward vibe and then I just walk by because I'm like, I don't even, I don't even know what's going to happen if I talk to this person, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, and using your phone sparingly. Yes. Yeah. It's, I feel like there's a fine line between like when, um, if someone's looking at your stuff and you're feeling kind of awkward, you don't know what to say, just let them look, but like have a little something to do, even if you're just like doodling or pretending to make notes or like fudging with something else, like don't just stand there and stare at them when they <laughs> are looking at your stuff. Yeah, that'd be awkward. Yeah. 
but I think that's where the compliments come in, um, you know, because you can pick something out about them and talk about it and then yeah, kind of judge from there. Yeah. If it's a good conversation. Makes yeah. sense. I think it's easier the more you do it, too, I feel like, because... Yeah, completely. Yeah. And I tend to be a little um, extra awkward in the mm. beginning of a show, mm-hmm. and then it gets better as the yes, show goes on, because I'm absolutely. like, oh, okay, got yeah. that out of the way. Exactly. <laughs> Unless you're Twinkie Chan, who I did a show with, and she is just the queen of confidence. She was just there, and she was just completely herself, and was just like, hey, you know, and people were taking pictures and fawning over her and just being so excited, and she was just like, hi. True pro. Oh, it was so good. Like, I think about it, and I'm like, I just need to channel Twinkie Chan right now. Your inner Twinkie Chan. Your inner Twinkie Chan. <laughs> hi, Twinkie. <laughs> so, some people were asking about how to take payment at shows. Yes. What do you think? Um, we used the little PayPal swiper for a little bit, mm-hmm. um, cause we process a lot of stuff through PayPal already. So it was kind of nice to keep it all together. Yeah. Um, and pretty much all of them are going to give you about the same, um, like percentage rates yeah. and options and things. So they're all pretty much the same. Yeah. Um, we now use Square. Mm-hmm. We really like the little interface so you can choose what item they're they're purchasing. Yeah. Kind of helps with, you know, seeing what's doing well at a show. For sure. Um, and they also give free readers away. A lot of them do anyway. Yeah. But um, Square especially. The teeny one? Yep. Yeah. A little tiny. Just plug mm-hmm. it in. Um, and... But you gotta take it out if you're gonna do a um, video, cause <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> cause it takes I about there. that. Yeah, yeah. Also, they're easy to lose, cause I lost a couple, and yes. I was like, crap, where did that go? Right yes. before show. So um, <laughs> have an extra on hand. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes, they're so good. Yeah, I use um, I use Square for a long time, and then they had they came out with a little. Um, the the big one where you put it in for the chip the chip yeah the chip yeah yeah. and then when that happened i just kind of went to shopify because i had opened my shopify shop and they have a specific reader so you can use your own inventory Mm. for that so Mm -hmm. it just takes it out of your shop's inventory which was really helpful for me it was expensive but it does it does like apple pay and swipe and the chip and i kind of liked that i could just keep it all together yeah, yeah, it's nice not to have to import, if you're, you know, doing bookkeeping, import different things. Yeah, um, for sure. My poor husband does it, so I said, <laughs> let's use Square, it's totally different. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, Square is pretty easy. I like that Square also has um, analytics and stuff for you, mm, mm-hmm. and, like, especially if you're doing something out of state, it's good to have a record of all the stuff. Yes. That you sold. Yes. So you can prove. <laughs> you can even what send out like a um, customer, like, how was your experience? And they, oh, yeah, I know. What? And they click like a sad face or a happy face. Like, Always the happy face. I know, well, hopefully. the happy face. And then they can write like about their experience or like, oh, the wait was too long, which yeah. probably isn't going to happen. Yeah. But that's awesome. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. And then it gets emailed to you and you're like, oh, so-and-so said they really like their new pen. That's really great. I know Etsy used to have one. I don't know if they still do. And I really feel like I saw something on Etsy about hooking a square up. But again, I don't really use Etsy as much anymore. So I don't know. I just sell through Etsy for Etsy. Yeah. And yeah. the other stuff is separate. That's what I do. So yeah, just pick really whichever one you're most comfortable with, I guess. And yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, they're all going to work probably equally as well. Yeah. Sweet. It's safe. Yeah. How many products to bring? Yeah. How many products do you bring? Well, like I said earlier, <laughs> you could have a table of just some hand-cut stickers. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just put them out on your table. Yeah. Like, that's, if you're doing, like, Artist Alley, that kind of thing, mm-hmm. um, usually the tables are, like, probably around two three hundred dollars depending on what you're doing Mm -hmm. um so you typically have six feet eight feet something around those lines um so you just want to try and make your area look full yeah 
Um, so if you only have a handful of pins, mm -hmm. um, maybe get some stickers made. There you go. To go with it. Yeah. Um, or there's a website called Arts Cow. Mm. Yeah. Don't be deceived by the name. Yeah. It's nothing to do with cows. Yeah. I feel like I've heard about it before, but what do they do? So you can upload your existing designs. Mm -hmm. Like maybe you have pins already. And so yeah. you have your designs from your pins. Mm -hmm. um, you can upload your existing designs and get it printed on a bunch of different things. Nice. Yeah. Um, so it is from China. Mm -hmm. So purchase ahead. <laughs> there you go. So it'll take a minute to get to you. Um, but when they have coupons, it's like five zipper pouches for $5. So keep an eye out for their coupons. Cool. And you can create variety and yeah. you'll have different things that you can sell, but you haven't had to invest a ton of money up front and get a huge amount. Yeah, and not having those the MOQ that can be crazy if you really want to get zipper pouches made or like lanyards made by yourself, and but you don't want to order a hundred of them. Right. Like that would be really nice just yeah. to have a few, just to fill it out. So if yeah. you have a show coming up and you're like, I only have three pins to sell. Right. And you can like repurpose. Yeah. And then also it comes down to how you display it too. So if you're mm -hmm. going to be selling three pins, well, then you probably don't want to just put the pin out on its card. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you probably want to kind of stagger them so you yeah. can put out multiple so it looks yeah. like you have more. Or have like a display creatively made and yeah. like props and stuff. Like that would be a good place to bring in fun props yeah. to put on your table I think yeah fill it out That'd be cute I mean I like when that. we first started we had like all sorts of fun stuff on the table other than our product yeah um, because we didn't need all the space yeah but we wanted it to look nice and yeah. fun um, that's not the case anymore <laughs> <It's good. laughs> yeah. but um, yeah all the fun stuff uh, the extra things kind of got taken away and yeah but your booth looks amazing now oh my gosh Thanks. so again all about the segue today we're so good at this <laughs> yeah, we're pretty good at love it. it display ideas for your stuff this chick seriously her displays are amazing like her booth is just like so quintessentially luxe cups it's beautiful yeah, we spend um, a fair amount of time and money <laughs> on our displays. Yeah. Um, so when someone walks past us, if they like the color teal, then they probably have to stop. That's awesome. Like, they don't really have a choice because it kind of punches you in the face. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of like mine with pink, and I love being next to you at shows yeah it's like giant pink table and then giant teal table and it's beautiful yeah i mean when it comes down to branding we, yeah i mean there's a lot to branding yes. but if i were going to simplify it mm -hmm. like pick pick your color yeah man that's a really great way to start it mm -hmm. um so if you see something you know your color's purple and you see a purple tablecloth oh crap Yes. Buy it. Do it. That was the very first thing I did at that first Oticon in like 2010 is I had a, just a pink sheet. They were like literally my sheets from my bed <laughs> and I took it to be my tablecloth. Yeah. And it was perfect because if people like, like I had little flyers made up with like my booth number and it was just like pink table in the back corner. And like anytime someone asked where I was, I was like, I'm the pink table in the back corner. Yeah, and I, it's it's really good to be able to stand out. Yeah. And then especially at those large events like that, for them yeah. to find you again. Yes. Because Oh my gosh, yes. Half the time someone says, oh, I really like this. I'm gonna shop around and then I'll come back. Mm -hmm. But if they can't find you again, it's all over. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And your displays too. Can you talk a little bit about, because I love how like you put out stuff where there's multiples of the same pin. And then I feel like you also have displays where like people can pick in what they want and then you grab it for them. Or is it mostly like you have the inventory out? So we try to at least put one of everything out. Mm -hmm. So if we don't have easy access to something, they can mm -hmm. take that one. And then when they walk away, I can dig through and get yeah. something to replace it. Um, typically, we have, like, for our pins, we'll have, like, mm -hmm. five or six of each one on display. Mm -hmm. um, that way, when they when someone comes up, because we have a deal 
hopefully forever, but yeah. um, a deal where if you purchase multiple, then you get a price mm -hmm. discount. Nice. Um, so someone might like a pen so much that they want to buy three of the same one. Yeah. Um, so we'll have those already in their spots. And it also keeps yeah. us from having to refill everything every time someone yes. buys something. That's a pain. Yeah, that's that a big was, pain. That was something I learned at the first Flare Fest mm -hmm. that I did. Because, like, for cheap displays, you can get, like, nail polish holders. Oh, yeah, and, the acrylic kind. Yeah, just acrylic nail polish holders and stick your pins in them. And that's great. But if you don't, like, stack them, then you're just going back into your back stock and filling that hole. Right. And then there's the fine line of, do you want to leave some holes so people know that these are, like, you Selling. know, yeah, <laughs> or do I mean, you, like, fill them right in? There's, I mean, you kind of get a vibe of that, I think, of the people that are there, but. Yeah, I mean, yeah. often someone will come up and I haven't refilled something, mm -hmm. um, and they'll go, oh, and we're back. As we were saying, <laughs> I don't remember where we left off. My um, camera just stopped because oh, we're talking so much. Oh, um. <laughs> Someone's excited because it's the last one. Yeah, someone's excited because it's the very last pen. Um, I will not lie to you and say, yes, that is the last one. <laughs> Buy it today. <laughs> um, I typically go, oh, that's just, yeah, that's the last one I have out right now. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, maybe their best friend next to them really wants the same one. Yeah, you don't want to be like, nope, that's it, with you, when you can sell another one. Yeah, or they no. come back the next day because they got that multi-day pass mm -hmm. and they go oh you have more yeah so that would be no fun no but don't be a liar so speaking of back stock do you have any tips for storing back stock so we have labels on as much as possible because you're like literally the most organized person i know well, it's amazing. Thanks. It's pretty. I try. I put forth some, some effort. That's, mm -hmm. for, that's for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, and we use clear shoe boxes. Okay. Um, and we have a little label on the front with a picture mm -hmm. of the pin. Cute. That's a really good idea. Um, and then we've got a big, when I say big, I mean like, see if this is a screen, it's like that big, um, tub mm -hmm. underneath the table. Yeah. Um, and then we just set them all in there so that the labels point up. Oh. Yeah. That's so smart. Yeah, so we can take a lot with us to shows. Um, yeah. Do that. Do that. <laughs> my um, my husband, I think he's got, like, Boy Scout complex. Mm, okay. So he's always got to be prepared. I like it. Which is great because yeah. that's not the case with me. <laughs> so um, we, a lot of times, we will take almost all of our stock yeah. to a show, especially a larger one. That's smart because I just use these, um, the bins from Target, just these right, I have like hundreds of them, I swear. And, but I stack them up on top of each other so it can be a pain to get at if like, I'm running out of something that's on the bottom. Like I try to put the stuff that sells really well up on the top, mm -hmm. but if you like stack them up on top and then you have to open it, it's kind of a problem. Yeah. Yeah. But that, yeah, that big bin, and the bin is really big, so it has a handle and has wheels. Oh my God. Of course it you. does. Go on. And I don't, it's That's pretty heavy. so good. Also, you have those amazing um, signs. Oh yeah, the, the retractable yes. banners. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. think of any words that describe what that was. So. <laughs> <laughs> they're not, uh, they're not inexpensive. Yeah. Um, but they don't get wrinkly or creased or ruined um, and they collapse into themselves like a little window shade. That's nice. Um, and yeah, you can get them printed however you want with mm -hmm. whatever you want. Um, but yeah, we put multiple together to yeah. create like a kind of like a backdrop. It's really cool. We'll have, I'm probably showing you pictures right now of what it looks like because it's amazing. Um, yeah, it's, and it's really good if you travel. Yes because you can't really, it's not easy to roll up a 10 foot banner and take mm -hmm. it somewhere. Yeah. And then you may not always have 10 feet of space. Yeah. So if you only have six foot of space, then we'll only use two banners mm -hmm. as opposed to if we have 10 foot, we can use all three. Yeah. So That's awesome. Modular. Yes. Yeah, all about modular. Cause you never know like really what your space is going to be like. They'll tell you it's a 10 by 10 or if it's a renegade and you get a three by six, like literally three feet across and six feet deep and like how do you even 
like once you get there you'll really get a better sense of what it's like and right especially if you rent tables because I feel like a lot of places you can rent tables and chairs from the people but you don't really know what yeah you're gonna get if you do that so tablecloths and modular displays I feel like are yeah and I call. we tend to overpack a little bit yeah like bring some extra displays that you think you may not need mm -hmm. we lay everything out before a show on the the table we think we're gonna get mm -hmm. um and then when you uh, see how it's all laid out then you can say okay I'm gonna take a couple extra bins so that mm -hmm. Um, for stickers or whatever to fill in spaces if you get too much space or yeah. or it's deeper or if you have to condense things mm -hmm. you know because the table's not quite yeah. as big. Do you recommend always doing your setup beforehand so you know? So especially if you're new to the game mm -hmm. um, once you're you've gotten you know it a couple under your belt then you can kind of eyeball it and be like oh I'm gonna do this like I did last time yeah except I'm gonna move this and this and push it together yeah yeah for sure yeah yeah I always like setting up because then I get excited for the show and if you do a setup beforehand that's a good thing to do on Instagram stories oh yeah or just on Instagram to get people excited and show people what you're doing just another way to market your stuff yeah. I think I don't think mine was pretty enough to send it to anyone <laughs> no way it's always pretty it, yeah and then you can take a photo and then yeah. you have if someone's helping you you could say okay this is what it needs to look like yes I always like to take a photo um, and always take a photo once you're done before people show up to like get a picture in your booth and be excited and that way you can have it for next time so yeah you're like what the heck did I even how did I even set this up <laughs> and that's super helpful because some um, some shows require a booth photo really to apply not typically like comic conventions not mm -hmm. to say that they don't care but it's not something that they're overly concerned with I suppose yeah um, but some of the larger ones where your booth can be like six or seven hundred dollars, they require you to send in a photo. They don't, they don't want no scrubs. No riffraff. Most of those Comic Cons provide mm -hmm. tables, chairs. Yeah. Um, I feel like most of the bigger ones do, but like a smaller local show. They may not. Oh Typic, God. you gotta read the fine print. Yeah. Um, but most of the ones, if it's in like a convention hall, they provide you with a table. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times they leave space in between you and your partner or mm -hmm. whoever's next to you. So it might be a good idea to take an eight foot table and you can mm. plop an eight foot table down instead yeah. of your six foot. Um, because be nice. or like a standing display or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if it's something local, then, you know, stay flexible when you're setting up because mm -hmm. you might be able to bring something in addition to fill yeah. in that space. That's nice. Yeah. Do you have any tips? I just thought, because I've never done an outdoor show ever. I don't own a tent. I've never done it. I've just been too intimidated and been like, I don't even know. Yeah. We have one this weekend. Yeah. Oh it's, yeah. It's supposed to rain. Hmm. Yay! So yeah, let's talk about let's talk about outdoor stuff then. Um, it's probably one of my most nerve wracking yeah. shows. Um, yeah. Because you invest money, uh, most of them are rain or shine. Mm -hmm. So even if it does rain, they're still going to expect the people to show up. And if you don't, mm -hmm. well, then you're out of your money, That's which is a bummer. Really big bummer. Yeah. Um. But yeah, getting a tent is important. Mm -hmm. um, you, some of them require you to have a tent. Don't they have, I feel like I saw someone on one of my Facebook groups talking about a very specific kind of like flame retardant tent. Was that you? It might have been. It was some, I know, I'm, I've heard it from multiple people, I feel like. So there are different grades of tents. Okay. So you can get one at like, Didn't know that. you know, Home Depot or Lowe's or mm -hmm. whatever they have near you um, that, you know, is maybe like 99 bucks. Mm -hmm. And for like little pop-up events, those are typically fine. Yeah. Um, and they're not really concerned with it. For the really large ones, like huge art markets, yeah, um, they do require it to be a specific type of flame retardant tent. Okay. And it has a special tag on the inside. I kid you not. And they have to know that that tag is there. And they come by and they check that tag each day. 
each day. Yes. Settle down, you guys. And and there are even, they tie, um, what are they? Shh, puts out fires. Extinguisher. Extinguisher. <laughs> I didn't know either. They put extinguishers <laughs> like every five tenths. Wow. Because it's like a big it's gotta be a big outdoor safety issue. Yeah. People are smoking. Yeah. I guess if they're not flame retardant, then it would like jump from tent to tent, and then everything Which would go Which would up. be horrifying. <laughs> yeah. So yes. Worst show ever. <laughs> yeah, that would be really bad. Yeah. It's there. Yeah. You got to read the fine print um, mm -hmm. because. But that, that show that we do, they make it abundantly clear up front that That's you good. have to have that. So it's not like you're going to get there and be like, oh, I didn't know. Yeah. They send out tons of information about it. That's good. Um, so it's, nice. it's clear. Yeah. So what do you do if it's a multiple day outdoor event? How do you handle your stock because I know a lot of people that's a question I've had before just in general because if I have a multiple day event and I'm like in a hotel or at home I pack all my stuff up and take it because I trust no one <laughs> so but for an outdoor thing I don't know uh, for outdoor so we have had issues where um, it rained really 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 hard overnight uh. Um, so the only thing, if we leave anything inside a tent mm -hmm. and zip it up over, overnight, mm -hmm. you have to have walls for that, for you to be able to do that yeah, too. Yeah, I was going to say, they, you gotta get one that comes with. Um, yeah. so if you are going to leave it overnight, I, we only leave like display items. Mm -hmm. We take all the product and either put it inside, um, like weather tight, weather totes. Mm -hmm. Um, to, so that if it does get wet, it's just the tote. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's whatever you feel the most comfortable with. Yeah. Um, because like the one this weekend mm -hmm. is near a lot of bars. So leaving your items in the tent probably mm -hmm. would be a little nerve wracking. You wouldn't yeah. sleep well. We tend, <laughs> we tend to at least camouflage and hide and put it away because yeah. if people aren't seeing it, then they probably aren't going to dig through it. Yeah, for sure. For indoor things. Yeah. 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 So, typically, I mean, maybe I'm a trusting person. I don't think I really am, but maybe. Um, typically, it's not an issue. Yeah, shoplifting. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like when you send things to shops for, co like... Um, Consignment. That's the word. Yep. I remembered a word this time. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> it, you know, you kind of... You kind of have to hand over some of that um, mm -hmm. and, and just hope and trust yeah. that it's going to work out to your, your advantage yeah. um, because you can't control everything. Yeah, you really can't. And you're not going to see everything. And I mean, it's possible. I feel like, and this probably isn't totally fair because I mean, $10 is a big deal if someone steals a pen. Right. But I feel like it's probably more of a big deal if it's someone, you know, with ceramics and or, stuff or with fine like a really high dollar thing right because i remember again apparently just talking about oticon this whole time um i remember i saw someone take one of my pins but i was selling to some other people and i thought they were going to give it back and i watched them and i was like i see you and i was so upset over this dollar 50 pin you know <laughs> i was like what the heck what is wrong with this person and it just ate me up and it's like it's a dollar 50. it did not cost me a dollar 50 to make that pin you know like a little and button it's like, yeah it's just yeah. a button and but it's it just, it's the principle of it that's going to bother you. So if you know something's taken, it's going to bother you. But it's usually not. I haven't had any problem with that. Yeah, I mean. It shows. Besides that one time. <laughs> I mean, really, the best way to combat it is, honestly, is just talking to people. Mm -hmm. And making sure that they know that you know that yeah. they have your product in their hands. Yeah. Um, that's, I mean short of hiring someone with a higher security <laughs> that's our advice is to hire security for your booth that's not our advice no, it's, not. it's gonna be fine um, but i mean yeah or if you have a friend with you yeah that is super helpful too because mm -hmm. now it's not one pair of eyes it's two pairs of eyes yeah um and you know if you're one customer at the table hopefully you have way more than that yes. but if you're one person person at that table and there are two people there mm -hmm. i mean 
that's that's way too risky. Yeah, for me. that's a deterrent for sure. Yeah, so yeah. just having people there that are alert mm-hmm. and talking to someone is going to be the hugest help. Yeah, yeah, just being aware. And don't if you have really expensive things, don't put those on the front right where the kids like to play. I was going to say, yeah, children too. Yeah. <laughs> Coming again. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I have a two-year-old who likes to run and grab. Like, I'm not taking him to a craft show. I have too much respect for the artist. Like. Yeah. And then as an artist, <laughs> make sure that if they're, if that's within, this is the thing I'm doing. Mm-hmm, but yeah. if it's within that spot, then it needs to be things that are kid-friendly. Yeah. For things sure. that are fabric or not mm-hmm. breakable. Yeah. Um, so that and your display too should also not be super like I had I was really into using like these streamers um under my table so I have like iridescent and oh. silver streamers oh, and yeah. then my um tablecloth on top of it so they kind of poked out and that was really great except children like yeah they it loved it which was great to get parents over to come buy stuff but then when they like start pulling it and like your tablecloth starts moving and your stuff starts falling, you're like, no. Yeah. So I don't recommend that. But. Yeah. <laughs> Having a durable <laughs> setup, yeah. something that's washable mm-hmm. uh, because people, depending on if it's outdoor events, they typically have alcohol. Yeah. Um, they'll too. set it down. Mm-hmm. Some people are very courteous and ask if they can set it down. Most people mm-hmm. don't even think about it. Yeah. Um, so if you do have lighter colors, Mm-hmm. Teal, pink. Yeah. Um, it needs to be washable. Yeah, absolutely. Splitting a booth with a friend. Oh. Hey. Hey. <laughs> um, yeah, it's super fun. I think it depends on um, the show that you're at and how they do it. And you can usually, like, contact. Because a lot of them, because I know, like, even Renegade, back in the day, you can, one of the options when you're applying is split a booth. With someone. I, last time I saw it, it also said that. Yeah. Um, you have to ask mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. Um, and some places, like a lot of the comic conventions, mm-hmm. sure, go yeah. for it. Um, some of them only allow a certain number of people behind a table. Yeah, usually like they'll come with like a certain number of passes or chairs. and Right. Um, some of them could care less and you could have four friends uh, <laughs> splitting a table, which then it's even less investment for yeah. you. Um, but really it comes down to how much space do you want? Mm-hmm. Um, because yeah. we're space hogs, so mm-hmm. we typically buy more than one table. Yeah. Um, because we want to be able to get more people up to the table. Yeah. Because awesome. when you go by and it's... Cu- really? Yeah. You can do it. Think so? Yeah. Maybe I'll try it. You could. You definitely can. I love it. They're double table too. Well, I mean, it's so good. When you think about it, if it's a really crowded table, you go, "Oh, wow, that looks cool. I wonder what that is." But if you can't get up to it, you go, "Oh, I'm gonna come back later." Mm-hmm. And then you forget because there's so much other awesome stuff around. I give them a business card. Yes. And another tip: if you don't get things specifically printed for shows, because we we truthfully don't. Yeah. Um, we write our booth number on it. Nice. That's perfect. Yeah. I love that. So they can find you again. Yeah. Do it. Mm, yep. Cool. Yeah. But yeah, I guess just asking ahead of time and figuring out and figuring out who you want to split a booth with because it needs to be, I don't know, I guess it doesn't have to be totally cohesive. You know, you can be different, but yeah. I mean, I guess it depends on who it is and what it is. Someone who's going to actually show up would be helpful. Yeah. Someone that's responsible Mm -hmm. um, and isn't going to leave you watching their booth the whole time. Yes. So, really, that's, I mean, Mm -hmm. if it's a real friend, then you should be fine. Yeah. It's also helpful to kind of create, like, a little barrier, not between it, but Mm -hmm. with, like, colors. Yeah, just so you know. So people don't get confused where they need to pay for stuff. Like, you have a pink tablecloth, and I have a teal one. Mm Mm-hmm. So. That's cute. It also helps if your booth mate brings lots of M&M's. That's me. Oh. I'm the one that brings candy to the show. Yeah, I didn't bring I candy. I do. You can you can share my candy if we split a booth. <laughs> okay, someone asked how costly is it? And I think we've mentioned before, there is a big range depending on what you want to do. Some. And what the show is. Right. Some events are free. Mm-hmm. Nice. If you can find those, yeah. do them. Because mm-hmm. any anything other than your time 
it is money made. Yeah. Um, some of them, um, I'd say like most cons, mm -hmm. if you're going to do Artist Alley, mm -hmm. expect around $200. Mm -hmm. Bigger ones, $300. Um, and then, yeah, if you're doing like an art market, those actually, they can get pretty pricey. Yeah. Like, I think the last time I checked, Renegade was like... Renegade has gone up, especially in Austin in particular, because I think it's 500 for 6 by 6 I think last time I checked it was 600 Oh my god, are you kidding me? Yeah. And if you want a 10 by 10 I think it's a grand. So, you better make sure, like, yeah. that that's your crowd. Yes. And yeah. that ask around again, like we said, with, you know, people who are similar to you. And I feel like a lot of shows like that, because Renegade does one in the spring and one in the fall. And depending on which one, there's a different crowd. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's worth it. Sometimes it's not. It's it's so hard. Yeah. I mean, truthfully, it's always a gamble. Yeah. Because who knows? Maybe something really terrible happens in the world and nobody shows up. Yeah. Or like weather can be crazy. Yeah, I did holidays. A, yeah, I did a Katsukon one year, and it was um, it was like the snowpocalypse year. Well. So it was like the first day, like no one was there because no one could get to it, you know. And it was crazy. But I don't know. I feel like even when you might not sell a lot, you're still out there. Like. I feel like if you can break even, <laughs> then it's still good because you were out there and you were talking to people and you were getting kind of that brand equity. Yeah. And I mean, I feel, humans. I feel like, so people will often ask like, oh, can I take a picture? Yes. And I say, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, some people are touchy about it, but let's yeah. be honest. We put pictures up of our stuff on yeah. the internet all day every yeah. day so why wouldn't you want someone else to right? do that yeah um but they'll take a picture and then honestly after a show i see a like a little spike in the number of people who are following us yeah because they've met us they've talked mm -hmm. to us either they bought something or they didn't yeah um but you know you're creating customers and relationships absolutely and i feel like when i look at my um stats like on instagram too i have a huge majority almost majority that's from Texas and Austin because mm. it's people that know that I'm here and come see me at things even when I don't do a ton of shows anymore um, and I think that's a really big deal so I think it's good like yeah. it can suck if you don't break even but I mean it you, happens yeah there's it can happen it's it's always gamble yeah. but try no to make it worth your your time yeah no one is immune to it so don't feel like if you have a bad show don't think you're the only person in the world that's ever had that experience so if you're starting out definitely i would recommend going for a fall mm -hmm. show because people they're ready they're ready to spend their money they well they yeah they kind of have to they do yeah sorry society says sorry <laughs> Be kind to your neighbor. Yeah. Um, because you might need to borrow a pair of scissors. Mm -hmm. um, make sure you give them back. Yes. Um, I always have a toolbox with like all of my essentials. Yes. And as a special treat to the people that made it to the end of this long video, <laughs> Livy's got a checklist of stuff for you. Yeah, like so, a little packing list. Yeah, so sign up um, below. I have a link below and you can download that list. Because yeah. it's always good. It's always good to have. No matter how long you've been doing shows, having a list to check off, make sure you've got everything. Yes. We print it out every time we do a show and check the things off. Yes. And then write little additions underneath for, like, new products or whatever it might be. So but good. it's super helpful. Yay. Cool. Well, thank you, Libby. Thanks. Yay. Um, I was super excited to do this. And I'm really glad you could come to the studio. She comes here all the time anyway. This is the only time I made her come and work, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, yay! Well, thank you for watching. And um, I will be back with another Nail Fans 101 video soon. Bye!